ask, test, and check. These are the three key words that come to mind when I think about buying a machine secondhand. So what I'll do is in this video, from my experience and from the experience of other people, I will share the key things to look out for when you want to buy a sewing machine secondhand. I know it's that time where we're looking to learn a new skill. You want to buy a sewing machine to learn how to sew garments or things for the household. You want to buy something secondhand because you want to see if this is something that you want to have long term. So second hand is the way to go really, in my opinion. These tips might seem like common sense to some people, but I'm still going to share them anyway, <laughs> because if one or two people get value from it, my job here is done. <laughs> anyway, my name is Juliet Uzo of SoSoNatural.com and I hope you're doing well today. You're welcome back to my channel and my very first thing that I would say is before you go into buying any sewing machine second hand, ask questions before you start. Also, be safe. Please meet whoever it is you're buying a sewing machine from in an open place in daylight so you can see the machine in real life in daylight and if possible go with somebody else. Just take someone else along with you. Go with your gut feeling as well and please do not negotiate in person. It's just so awkward. Choose your method of communication, whether it's via email, instant messaging, however you decide to do it. Just try to negotiate via, you know, something trackable so you can go back and retrace your steps or retrace your messages, however you say it. Where could you buy them though? Where could you buy sewing machines? From my experience and from what I know, apart from through word of mouth, I know um, buying from eBay and I know buying from Facebook marketplace. If you know any other places where people can buy sewing machines secondhand, please let us know in the comment section below. I know there are lots of people who will find that useful. So what are the questions to ask you might be wondering? Well, first question that I would recommend is when was the machine bought? Do you still have the receipt? Just to have an idea of when the machine was made or to know if you've got warranty, if there are any things that you can get from being a first year or second year owner of the machine. These are just questions that you can ask. So another question you want to ask is what has the sewing machine been used for and where has it been used? Uh, I say what because some sewing machines might have been used in the industry like in the costume industry where sewing machines work really hard and they're used for really heavy duty fabrics. You want to know what kind of jobs the sewing machine has done in the past, just so you have an idea of what to expect from the machine. You also want to ask whether the machine has been damaged in the past or if it's ever been serviced. Well, one of the reasons I think would be useful to ask that question is you never know, the seller might give you some recommendations about where they would normally take their machine for repairs, servicing, where to buy parts for the machine and that type of thing. So it's a very, very useful question to ask. Another thing that I would recommend asking is whether the seller has anything else that they're selling off. You never know, you might get a bundle deal. Some people might be selling off um, things like mannequins, they might be clearing out their spaces, they might be downsizing, they might be getting upgrades. You want to ask them just in case. Yeah, you know, no, I mean, there's no harm in asking, right? But then after all those questions, knowing the things you want to know, you decide you want to go ahead. When you actually meet the person in real life, there are a few things that you want to do. You want to first of all, make sure you inspect the sewing machine, check the parts, check all the different buttons, ask questions about what the, the buttons are and what they're used for, especially if a manual and the original box hasn't been provided alongside the machine. The person might have used the machine for other things that you are not very familiar with, things like um, embroidery or quilting or free motion sewing. These questions are useful so that um, the seller can give you tips and tricks or a quick run through of how those buttons and how those functions work. My next thing to say is, Look out for any scratches, nicks, or any, you know, broken parts or broken little bits and pieces here and there. Look, my only reason for saying that is you can use it to your advantage in negotiation, you know? A few bucks could be knocked off of the 
like the price of the machine for you. When it comes to buying secondhand, <laughs> I would recommend do everything you can. I mean, we're trying to save our coins, aren't we? <laughs> okay. Okay. So from my experience of being an actual seller, okay, I've sold my very first overlocker on Facebook and that overlocker, I sold it sometime this year, early this year. I asked the person to come along with their own fabric, the sort of fabric that they work with the most and for them to test out the machine using the fabric. So bring along your own fabric, the fabric you feel comfortable with, take it with you and test the machine in the presence of the seller. There you could ask questions. If anything you're not too sure about, you can ask them. In the process, you're checking for any kind of faults or defects with the sewing machine. Also, you might not see the person ever again. So uh, if something goes wrong or if something doesn't work when you get home, if you didn't try it in their, pe in their presence, that's it. You won't see them again. So it's best to ask as many questions as possible because that might be the first and last time you meet them. So when all these things are done, questions are asked prior to meeting, you meet the person, you've tested, you've checked, you've asked questions, you're at the point now where you have to pay. How are you gonna go about paying? Please, please don't ever accept checks if you're selling. Obviously, you probably won't be watching this video if you're selling, but if you're buying, try not to go with a check. Yeah, don't take your checkbook with you. Pay in cash if you can. I recommend PayPal because PayPal, the person can see the, the amounts dropping into their accounts. Like they'll get an alert saying that they've got their money. You could try um, bank transfers, um, but you have to have Wi-Fi, right? <laughs> so um, just think about these things prior to actually meeting the person. So it's not a wasted journey. So with all these things said and shared with you, over to you. What do you think are the pros and cons of buying a sewing machine secondhand? Please leave them all in the comment section below so people can see for themselves. If they're not too sure, they can see the reasons why actually buying secondhand is a good option before you actually delve right in and buy a brand new sewing machine. Because I, I, think, I think it's the best route to take. It completely depends on, ev well, everyone's different. But I think at this point in time, if you're brand new to the skill, you're brand new to the hobby, Start with a, sewing, a second hand sewing machine, which will be, you know, a fraction of the original price so that you can check to see if this is actually what you want to do in the long run so that you don't spend hundreds and hundreds of pounds or dollars or euros on a sewing machine that you probably won't use as much as. Let me know what the cons are in the comment section as well. I think the pros might outweigh the cons for some people, to be honest everyone's different. So let's know what you think in the comments section. Let's make it an interactive one. And with that, I'm going to let you enjoy your sewing journey in 2022 and beyond. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day as well. All the very best everyone and take care. Bye.